Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Hello everyone. Another cooking segment, I guess. I'm going to make a fish pie. Um, Perhaps mine should be called a seafood pie. I'm also including fresh shrimp in it. Um, a fish pie is a pie in the same sense that a uh, shepherd's pie is. There isn't any crust. Um, there's a filling and then there's um, seasoned mashed potatoes on the top. So it's a crustless pie, a, a fish pie. I've been wanting to do it for some time now. There are quite a few ingredients, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. You can get your hands on all of them quite quickly. I had all of them in the house here, I guess. I don't think there's anything here that I had to buy specifically. But I'll take you through the ingredients in a minute. You need a 1.75 liter baking dish. And this is an English recipe. Uh, dishes aren't usually measured that way here in Canada or in the United States. What I'm using is an 8x12 Pyrex, shallow Pyrex baking dish, and I did measure it. I put water in it and it'll hold the 1.75 liters, plus gives you a little extra space, so I guess that will do. But I think without further ado, what I'll do is I'll bring you in closer here and uh, show you all of the ingredients that are involved. I don't think I can get it all in one camera shot, so I'll move the camera halfway through here. Uh, you need one small onion, and that wasn't any problem for me. My garden produced a lot of small onions. I quartered it. I left the root end on so that it won't completely fall apart. This is just for seasoning, and in two of the quarters I put a clove, a whole clove. I uh, used a wooden skewer to get a hole started in there and then the cloves are sort of shaped like thumbtacks anyway so it went in quite easily. One bay leaf. I have my own bay tree in the living room so that's one of my own fresh bay leaves. Eight ounces of smoked haddock, a pound of fresh haddock and I'm adding oh, I don't know three or four ounces of fresh shrimp that I have peeled and deveined milk, uh, there is 600 milliliters or one pint of milk. Uh, this is an English recipe and when they're referring to pints they're referring to the imperial measure, imperial pint, which is larger than uh, the American. It's the same measure that we used to use in Canada before we went to metric. So their one pint is 2.5 cups. Uh, uh, American measure. 300 milliliters of heavy cream, and they say half a pint, that's one and a quarter cups. This contains all of the milk and the cream except two-thirds of a cup of the milk has been reserved for when we mash the potatoes. Four large eggs, hard cooked and sliced. I think I'll move the camera so that I make sure you get the rest of it. That will do. Salt and pepper to taste, but uh, smoked haddock is very salt. It has a lot of salt in it for my taste anyway, so I'm not adding any additional salt. I will be adding some cracked fresh black pepper. It suggests white pepper. And I believe I'm right in saying that white pepper is the same as black pepper, only it has that black skin removed, some sort of a process where they can remove the black skin. I never have cared for it. Uh, it has a totally different flavor than black pepper, and that's what I'm used to. Uh, so I don't buy white pepper. I've never cared for the taste. Four ounces of butter divided. There's uh, two ounces in each one of those ramkins that are used in two different places. A couple of tablespoons, an ounce and a half of uh, all-purpose flour, five tablespoons of finely chopped uh, flat leaf parsley, one egg yolk, uh, this, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's nutmeg back there and a nutmeg grater, 
and 2 pounds 12 ounces 1.25 kilograms of what they're calling a flowery potato uh, F-L-O-U-R-Y flowery not referring to flowers in the garden and that's not a term that I find used very often here in in North America it's an English term and in my opinion what they're talking about is a potato that's fluffy and dry would make good mashed potatoes or an excellent baking potato not something that's waxy or wet so I have gone with russet potatoes russets that I grew myself this summer and I have uh, 2 pounds 12 ounces there or 1.25 kilograms well that appears to be all of the ingredients so now we'll get started putting this together I lied <laughs> One of the things that I'm adding that isn't in the recipe is a cup of uh, sharp grated Canadian cheddar cheese. Excellent cheese, very sharp and, and flavorful. Uh, I read several recipes online and uh, one or two of them had cheese in the potatoes and I thought I'd like that so I'm adding that. So basically I think the only difference here is I'm adding some shrimp and the cheese. Other than that it's the same as the recipe, the link you'll find down below the video here on YouTube. Well, I guess we're ready to get started. The milk and the cream goes in a saucepan. Add the bay leaf, the small onion and the two cloves. I'm not adding the shrimp. Uh, shrimp cooks very quickly. I'll be putting the shrimp in the pie raw and letting them cook at the same time that it's in the oven, heating up and uh, browning the top or whatever. The smoked haddock and the fresh haddock. to a boil, I'll turn it down to a simmer and simmer it for eight minutes. I'll bring you back and show you what that looks like when it comes to a boil. Well, the potatoes are on the stove cooking and this is just starting to come to a boil so I'll now turn it down to a simmer and let it go for eight minutes and I'll bring you back once the fish is cooked. So it has been simmering away for eight minutes. I'll shut the fire off. And now you take the fish out. Don't need to worry about the onion or the bay leaf. That's going to be strained out a bit later, I guess. Maybe the line bring you bits of onion here. see some smaller pieces of fish but if I didn't get it all I'll put it on the plate to cool when I strain the liquid out here this liquid the milk and cream that we cook the fish in Now be used to make the white sauce, the bechamel for the base of the pie. I guess that was pretty good. I thought I didn't get all the fish, but evidently I did. Tiny little piece there, but 
that'll be for the cook. So I'll bring you back in just a minute or two here when I'm set up and ready to, to make the white sauce. Uh, the fish just gets left at room temperature until it's cool enough to handle and we'll be flaking it up and putting it in the bottom of the baking dish. We're using the same saucepan. I don't see any sense in dirtying another one. Turn the gas back on there and add two ounces of the butter. flour. And I'll cook that for a minute or so. so the butter is all melted and the, I don't want the flour to brown, but cooking it helps to get rid of some of that raw flour taste. Now add the liquid back in slowly. To bring this back up to a, almost a boil and then simmer it for 10 minutes. So I'll bring you back when it gets up to that temperature, I guess. It's just starting to come to a boil and I'm reducing the heat. As low as it can go without turning it off, I guess. And now I will stir it frequently and let it go for 10 minutes. That will finish cooking the flour and finish th thickening the sauce. So I'll bring you back at that time. Well, it's completely cooked and quite thick. I have shut the heat off. And now add a few more seasonings. A few scrapings of nutmeg. Five tablespoons of flat leaf parsley and a grind or two of, of black pepper. I had some black pepper in it when the fish was cooking, but when I strained it, of course, I lost most of that. I tasted the sauce. It really does not need any salt, but as I say, the smoked haddock is, is quite salt. It has a nice flavor from the smoked haddock, also from the cloves and the, the bay leaf. I've never used any of this combination before with fish, but so far I'm, I'm liking the taste anyway. Well, let's get the pie prepared, or start preparing the pie. Now the fish is cool enough to handle. You just flake it into the bottom of the dish that you're using. a child, child would have said, using your impeccably clean hands. If you read the recipe, I believe it called for codfish. Not having codfish, I'm using two different kinds of haddock. You could use any white fish, whatever you, whatever your favorite fish is. It's entirely up to you, I would think. Well, that seems to be a pretty good layer of, 
of fish and I'm going to add the shrimp to this stage. They're still raw but shrimp cook very quickly. If I had cooked them in the milk and then put them in this again in the heat they would be very tough. Over, really overdone. These shrimp are evidently from Quebec. The fish shop that I buy from in uh, Back Bay, New Brunswick. The lady recommended them. She had two different kinds of shrimp, but she said these ones are from Quebec and, and they're excellent. So they were already deveined, but I had to I had to shell them. Looking for what I put in there next. Here it is, right here. The hard-boiled egg slices. Use one of those sort of harp egg slicers. Does a neat job. I do my eggs, hard boiled eggs, in the instant pot. If you have an instant pot, it's amazingly easy. You know how difficult it can be to peel the shell off of boiled eggs, particularly if they're nice and fresh like these are. They're very hard to peel. Well, five minutes under pressure in the instant pot and then you let it just sit there for five minutes before you release the pressure. Release the pressure and put the eggs in ice water. I just fill my sink with, or half fill my sink with uh, ice cold water and add a couple of trays of ice cubes to it. And they come out perfectly every time. I've tried many different methods, and this is definitely the one that I like. But if you don't have an instant pot, I don't suppose it makes sense to <laughs> to buy an instant pot just to do your eggs. In. But I also use the instant pot for many other things. It's a Canadian invention, and like most Canadian inventions, it's made in China. But, uh, nevertheless, it was invented in Canada very clever piece of equipment. Well, that is the sauce added. Now this goes in the refrigerator to chill for an hour. In the, in the meantime I will finish preparing the potatoes that go on top. So I'll bring you back when the potatoes have finished cooking and uh, we're ready to rice them and put them on top. Well, you can mash the potatoes any way you want to. I'm going to rice mine. Just because every time I cook, I don't think there should be a clean dish left in the house when I finish. I think the potatoes are done. I just took them off. The oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 200 degrees Celsius. so I guess they're done. Well, I won't make you watch me rice each potato. I'll bring you back when I have when I have finished the task. I'm ready to do the very last potato, I guess. By the time I finish using the ricer, I figure out what I should have done. Don't use the thing that often because I don't often cook this much potato. But it works much better if you bring it up and use it in two hands and also I guess you can see what's happening at the other end. Well, there are the potatoes mashed or riced, doesn't make any difference whichever one you want to do. To 
that I'm going to add the other two ounces of butter. Softened quite a bit already. It's been at room temperature for a while. They are a nice dry potato. I grew two varieties Yukon Gold, which I always liked and russet. Russet is an excellent baking potato and that's what these are as russets but I'm not terribly impressed with the Yukon Gold. They grew side by side if you watch my gardening videos in the bed that I use up at the community garden. Russets are wonderful. Uh, some of the earlier Yukon Golds that I dug had a taste that I didn't care for and if you saw my harvesting video, some of the very large ones that I showed, I haven't used all of those yet, but every day is my oven just gone to temperature. I haven't used all of those large ones yet, but the ones that I've cut in two, I've discarded. Hollow in the center and uh, kind of a black or gray color. Anyway, I wouldn't eat the things. I don't know what happened to them in the the roof stoat bed that I grew them in. That's the egg yolk. This is the cheese, which is not in the recipe. But it was in another recipe that I read, and I like the idea. I love cheddar. And this is an excellent cheddar. It's really sharp and old, an older cheddar. I don't think it tells you on the packaging how old it is, but it has a lovely sharp flavor. instructions are to add enough of the milk to make a soft mash, so I won't add it all just yet. I want something that's quite soft that will spread well. to get the pie out of the fridge and add this topping to it. I'll bring you right back when I'm ready to do that. Now, I think we're ready to add the topping. I'm going to do it anyway and see what happens. And when I put this in the oven. I'm going to put it on a half sheet just in case the sauce decides to bubble over. probably need all that potato or not, but I'm going to use it now that I've got it all ready here. I'll try to spread that bits as best we can. I already squeezed out some of the sauce there. Sauce, I guess. 
offset spatula here might help to smooth it. Although as soon as I smooth it, I'm going to rough it back up again with a fork. Cheese is showing up good in it. Now it just says to drag a fork over the top of it. Changing directions I think each time you make another drag down. That's just to give it a, a textured top that will brown better. And as I say I'm going to put this on a half sheet pan and it bakes at 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius for 35 to 40 minutes or until it's a nice, hopefully golden brown on top. So I will bring you back at that point. That is after 35 minutes, and I think that was all I wanted to let it go. It's just starting to brown nicely on top, and I'm glad I used the half sheet pan. Because as I was afraid, it has bubbled over. I think a deeper dish would have done better, but I went by the instructions, 1.75 liters. I think if I had used something that was a little bit deeper, I wouldn't have had that problem. So. That's an issue you can be aware of, I guess, if you're going to make this yourself. I'm going to let that cool for 10 or 15 minutes. It would be still bubbling hot at this point. And then we'll try it. I'm going to say it's cool enough to dive into it and give it a try anyway. quite nicely. A bit of fish on the... Hmm. I love that sauce. The sauce tastes very good. Well, I have a little bit of salad to go with it. And I will meet you in the dining room. Well, I'm anxious to give this a try. Very good. I didn't get any egg that time the first time. I'll take some with egg the next time. Flavor of the smoked fish. And the different seasonings that I used, all different to me anyway, all come together nicely. Very good. I really like that. The recipe says that this is enough for four servings. Well, it would be four very hungry people. I would think you could serve this for six, maybe eight people. And if that's all you were eating, you still wouldn't want a quarter of that big casserole. I see a shrimp. A shrimp peeking out down here. I said you could use any fish that you prefer. I think the smoked fish did add a nice additional flavor. If you don't have smoked haddock, you could use smoked salmon. It would be very good in it. I'm glad I did it. I've never made a fish pie before. I have made a clam pie. That's a local favorite here. And I just was able to buy frozen clam meats from the large clams. I've never seen those before. found them in, I think it was Sobeys last week sometime. So 
Perhaps I'll do another video when I make a clam pie. But I hope you give this a try if you like fish. It's an excellent dish for a meal, I think. Even for a meal with company. And I don't know. <laughs> As I say, I'm sure it would serve easily six people. And I'm quite sure you could probably serve eight people and uh, probably still have leftovers. Well, thank you very much for watching.